Well, good afternoon. We are down in uh, Washington County right now. A little family trip that we took here today. And we are heading down towards the ocean right now. Just a little ways down this way from where I'm walking. And um, first we'll be getting going near something called Norse Pond. We've been down hiking on this trail before, but we didn't get to go see Norse Pond, so we're going to see that today. And I uh, thought I'd take you, the viewers, along for the ride. Been a pretty long drive down here, but uh, we really like Washington County, and, and uh, certainly it's fun to get out once in a while and go someplace. But I want to talk, while I'm doing my little hike thing here, I want to talk about independence versus interdependence. And there's some interesting things here, for sure. Um, but I'll just, I'm going to break the, uh, or I'll tell you right away what this whole, the purpose of this video is about. Um, I'll spoil the surprise or something. It won't make you wait till the end to figure out what I'm talking about. Interesting little berries here. You can see some blue ones on there. Those aren't blueberries. I forget what that is. Um, these plants are called, uh, there's a whole bush of them right over, over here. Um, if you know, write it in the comments section. But uh, what's the video about? What's the whole issue? The whole issue here is that the Antichrist Kingdom is going to be a system of dependence. That's the the hook inside the, or rather I should say the worm. The hook inside of it is the, the Antichrist Kingdom. Um, how so? What do I mean by that? Well, um, in order for you to buy and sell in that time that's coming, you have to have the mark and worship the beast in his image. And if you don't have that, you won't be able to buy or sell in that time. So you'll be dependent. Uh, most people do not grow their own food anymore. Um, they can't make their own clothing. They can't. They can't do a lot of things for themselves. They can't uh, heat their home with firewood. They can't, you know, get anywhere without a vehicle or some kind of transportation. They can't imagine life without smartphones and internet and computer and whatever. And uh, the Antichrist system is going to use that to their advantage. That's why you will have the system of smart cities and they'll get people out of these wild areas so that they can just completely rape the earth for the um, precious metals and everything else that they need in order to make their all their 6G everything work. The Internet of Things and all the other stuff. That's what they're planning. And um, so when you talk about independence, independence goes against that system. Now I'm on the uh, narrow road here. This little log thing you can see here, got to step on. But um, independence goes against what these devils want for the future. They want interdependence. And of course we all know about the Declaration of Independence that happened here in America. <clears throat> where the American people um, declared their independence from England and uh, back there in the 18th century and <clears throat> I have to climb down over these rocks here and but what about the declaration of interdependence some interesting things about that uh, there were actually multiple declarations of interdependence not just one, um, but there's one in particular that was rather interesting in light of end times prophecy. You see, the end times talks about the fifth kingdom, the iron and miry clay, which I've talked about. The iron is the Roman system, the miry clay is the mingled Jews, the Pope's Jews. We call them Papal Juden. All right. <clears throat> Declaration of interdependence on April. 8th, 1944, um, a philosopher by the name of Will Durant, say more about him here in a minute, designed 
a declaration of interdependence to, quote, raise moral standards. Almost like the Noah Hyde laws. And, um, and he was against racial intolerance. Hmm, I wonder why he was against racial intolerance. We'll get back to that here in a minute. And uh, a little while later, he introduced this Declaration of Interdependence at a gala dinner at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel on March 22nd, 1945. So nearly a year later, he introduced this thing to a bunch of wealthy uh, people serving the Pope. Hmm, interesting. And uh, later on it was read into the Congressional uh, uh, Record on October 1st, 1945. Uh, rather interesting for sure. Be back in just a minute, have to do something here quick and uh, be right back with you. All right, hopefully it's not too windy here. Hopefully you can hear me, but this is Norse Pond behind me here. Looks pretty neat. Now we're going to head down to the ocean. But getting back to what I was saying, um, this whole thing of declaration of interdependence uh, <clears throat> and Will Durant, and he uh, came to a Jew, Jewish rabbi, and to a Christian theologian, and they came up with this whole thing of this declaration of interdependence there in 1945, essentially, is when they really got it all done. You say, what's the significance to that, brother? Well, if you look into who Will Durant is, was, um, he was a Jesuit. A trained Jesuit. Huh. Interesting. And he married a woman, uh, Ariel, uh, whatever last name, maiden name, and um, she was a Jew. Hmm. So again, you have the merger of iron and miry clay coming together and saying, let's make these standards, let's do this thing here um, to make a declaration of interdependence that Christians and Jews should be working together. Uh, well, I don't see any scripture for that. Um, Jews that reject Jesus Christ, they are our enemies according to the gospel. I'm not going to be working together with any of them. Um, but I just find that very interesting that this declaration of interdependence, what are they building for? What are they building up to, I should say? They're building up to the Antichrist kingdom, the Noahide laws. They want to make, quote, we want to raise moral standards. Hmm, raising moral standards. You say, well, isn't that a good thing? It's a good thing if it's based on the New Testament. Not a good thing if it's based on the Noahide laws, which come from the uh, Satanic Talmud. The Talmud which God never inspired. Um, again, you have to remember, if you don't understand the issue, and we'll be bringing out some more stuff on this in the future, but if you don't understand the issue, the uh, a lot of the different religions out there, they reject the New Testament. And... Uh, Judaism, not only did they reject the New Testament, they also went against the Old Testament and they rewrote things in their Babylonian Talmud. And so now they have a, this horrible evil system of all kinds of wickedness and everything else in that Talmud. And uh, it's all because they rejected the New Testament. What a shame. But uh, let me get my Bible out here, I'm trying to reach around and grab it out of my camera bag. I'm going to read two verses of scripture for you to tie this whole thing together. You say, well, shouldn't we as Christians, shouldn't we compromise sometimes to, for the greater good? Um, no, we shouldn't. I really hope the wind isn't going to be a problem today. It's pretty windy down here. Windy when we left and I thought, going down to the ocean, if it's windy here, in the northern part of Maine, it's going to be even more windy down at the ocean. So, but uh, Romans chapter 12, 
And we go down here on this rock. Um, uh, keep climbing here. Get out here in the opening where I can see it better. Hopefully the wind won't be too bad. Romans chapter 12. Do this, maybe I can block it. Um, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, Christians, Bible-believing Christians, once you are born again, um, God calls you to be a non-conformist. You do not say, let's seek to be dependent on the systems of the world. Let's seek to get along with the world and be like the world and act like the world and say, you know something? You can reject Jesus Christ and I, we can still kind of fellowship together and whatever else. No, we can't. Um, I am not part of anything ecumenical. I never will be. Uh, I find that very detestable. Uh, Jesus Christ made it very plain, very clear, that he is the only way to heaven. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no other way to heaven than through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the door. John chapter 10 talks about that. Um, so you have people that come out and they say, well, uh, you know, we all have a, we're living in a global world now. Um, we need to get together and we need to get along and everything else. It's good for business, you know what I mean? Um, shouldn't be that way. God divided the nations. We're gonna, gonna be doing a video on that today too, all about this illegal immigration thing what it's really all about uh, it's getting worse as time goes by but God divided the nations he wants people to be separate he doesn't say let's all get together uh, everybody getting together is what happened back at the Tower of Babel that's why God came down and confounded the languages God didn't come down and say hey this is great everybody's getting along putting aside their differences and whatever it's not supposed to be that way you say, but in Christ, we're, we're all one in Christ. Well, that is true. Uh, as far as um, doctrinally, yeah, we're all one in Christ. But even with that, um, we don't all just blend and put everything together there. Uh, no, it doesn't work that way. You know, Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, talks about there's neither Jew nor Gentile. But then it goes on to say, there's neither male nor female. Uh, we're all one in Christ Jesus. Well, it's talking about doctrinally. It is not talking about as far as position is concerned. Um, I believe if you're a Jew and you're a saved Jew, you should be in Israel. That's your the land of promise. You should be over there witnessing to other Jewish people, preaching the Lord Jesus Christ to them. Um, saying, you know, hey, the Messiah already came. His name's Jesus. And as me as a Gentile, I should be with my people, preaching the gospel to them. Um, you know, my wife, she doesn't have the same exact uh, rules and things that apply to her as I do to me in the New Testament. Um, there needs to be separation, there needs to be division there. And, um, well, you know, my wife should look more like the world and dress more like the world, and no, she shouldn't. She wants to please God with her life. That's why she's a nonconformist. That's why she says, I'm not going to go with the popular trends and styles that are out there. No thank you, don't want anything to do with it. And uh, I have to do the same. Um, you know, my personal conviction, for me, I'm going to have a beard. Why? Because I'm a man. Men are supposed to have facial hair. And I realize some of the brethren out there, you can't grow a good beard or whatever, well, that's fine. But uh, if you're coming up with some kind of weird standard, like I've seen among a lot of the Baptists, uh, and they come out with these weird things, you need to be clean shaven, clean cut, and whatever. Okay, book, chapter, and verse on that, please. 
there isn't anything in there. You know, that there's some kind of a, as a New Testament Christian, you need to have a shaved face or something. Uh, that's a tradition of men. That's stupid. Uh, if you want to have a, you know, shaved face or whatever else, well, good for you. There's some blackberries. And I don't mean the uh, cell phone blackberry. See? Right there. Blackberries. Very good. Um, the Lord provides. <laughs> I didn't bring any kind of water along for the hike here because it's not a really far in hike. Maybe about, I don't know, two miles or something like that. And uh, I wasn't raised, you know, I was raised in the country and hiking and everything else was just normal. And, you know, that wasn't some kind of thing we had to go someplace special. We hiked all the time. And uh, so for me, I'm not familiar with people that just have to always have their water bottle and every couple of feet they're drinking. Um, I'm just not used to that. I'm used to going for many miles without anything to drink. You know, I remember reading a story about the um, some of the different Native American tribes here in America. Uh, how the, when a young man was training to be a brave, you know, um, an older warrior, prove that you're a man kind of a thing, they would give him, they'd fill up his mouth with water. Water. <laughs> I know I say water weird. Everybody always gives me a hard time because I'm from Pennsylvania. And we say water down there. W-O-O-D-E-R, water. But, <laughs> but um, they put water in the guy's mouth like that and then they'd make him run a couple miles. And when he gets to the other side there, he has to spit out the, that same amount of water. That takes character. I appreciate that. And, uh, for me, hiking is about putting down my flesh. Um, so, don't let anybody in the comments give me a hard time, in other words, about, oh, brother, you need to stay hydrated and everything else. I am. I hate a couple berries. See? And I know other plants and things, too, that I can eat if I want to, if I feel like it. But, um, you know, and I, I do hope that, I know some of you really appreciate these walk and talks, but... Uh, are you just walking through the woods with a camera? Well, I go places. Uh, I don't record everything that I do in life. There's a little bit of chaga growing on that birch tree right there. I'll show you there. Right back in there, you can see it. The dark right there. That's chaga. Chaga mushroom, you can look that up. Very medicinal mushroom. Tastes like a blending of coffee and black tea. It does not taste like some kind of weird musty mushroom type of a thing. Very high in magnesium. Um, very good for you. But be careful, there's synthetic stuff out there. So you want to get wild harvested chaga. Um, if you live in the north especially. And you can go out and you can find it. In different areas. But, um, what, all, what am I saying all this stuff for? What does this have to do with the independence versus interdependence? Very simple. God has bounds, bounds that he's set so that people will search for the Lord. When you have a melting pot, all peoples and all everybody coming together, pretty soon you start to lose distinction and everybody just has to put aside all their differences. And if you put aside your differences, you're no longer a Christian. I'm not saying you lose your salvation, but I'm just simply saying you can, you can be a saved Christian and not live like one, and not act like one, or look like one, or whatever else. Blend in with the world. And that's wrong. And you'll answer for it. You will suffer for it. Believe me, I've tried. <laughs> and I have suffered. I've got scars on my body to prove it. Um, not good. Be separate. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father unto you. The Bible talks about that in the book of Revelation. But our scripture, our text, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, 
we're to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It is perfectly reasonable for the Lord to ask you to make sacrifices for him. You know why? Because he made sacrifices for you. That's why. Um, and it's a, it's a wonderful thing to count on the Lord. I didn't know if he, I didn't think that there would even be any berries this late in the year, but there's some really wonderful blackberries back there. And uh, taste great. They just, they not only give you hydration, but they also give you some energy and things, some good natural sugar. Um, the seeds are good to chew on. They stick with you for a while <laughs> in your teeth. <laughs> it's good, it's wonderful. Builds character. And this uh, rocky path I tread is symbolic of the narrow way. Right now, the world goes out to their shopping malls and their big vacation resorts and their cruise ships and their all that other stuff. You say, wouldn't you rather be out doing that right now, Brother Brian? Not at all. Not on your life. I am very thankful to have been able to make this trip down here today and to share this time with all of you. Um, someday we'll walk the golden streets of heaven. It'll be a wonderful time and we'll fellowship. You can tell me what all the Lord did in your life. And it'll be a blessing to hear if I've been a blessing to you. It'd be so neat. Took a trip to Bangor uh, a couple days ago. And uh, I think it was on, was it? I think it was the day before my son's birthday. So it'd been the 4th of September. I went down there and went to walk into a grocery store. And the guy walks out of the door, customer, and he says, Brian Denlinger. <laughs> he said, good to meet you, brother. He said, my hands are greasy right now. He said, I'd shake your hand. And we talked, not very long. He had things to do, I had things to do. But it's this little quick time of fellowship there, fellowship of the spirit. And uh, I like meeting my viewers like that. That's really nice really means a lot to me to hear that I've been a blessing in your life, that my labors are not in vain. So, <laughs> but brethren, don't ever forget the thing of our independence. Um, we have to be separate. We cannot join with lost people. Um, we can be kind to lost people, but we have to remind them that they are in a false system. If you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, if he's not your Lord and Savior, then you don't have anything. Well, I'm gonna talk you out of your belief in, in Jesus and the King James Bible. Uh, no. Uh, no, you're not. Um, none of you have anything to offer me out there that would be better than Jesus and my King James Bible. Not one of you. Well, you know, if you would actually study manuscript evidence, Brother Brian, you would actually see that there are better, more accurate translations available. Uh, 24 years of studying Bible versions and the manuscript evidence issue. No, thank you. I don't need your uh, new versions that come from the Vatican. Nah. Uh, well, you know, we'll convince you that Jesus is not the real Messiah and that uh, you should become a Noahide. No, you know, I already tried self-righteousness in my life. I already tried to live for myself and be a good guy. Um, no, I'm, I'm done with that too. So uh, give me Jesus, give me the King James Bible, and I'm happy, and I'm content, and I have joy and peace that passeth understanding. And I don't need to be interdependent or dependent on anyone. Uh, I will thank God for things that are provided for me uh, that I can't do for myself. Thank you, Lord. Appreciate that. You know, we go grocery shopping or whatever else. We get the things we need. Come home and I thank the Lord. I pray about it. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings of today. 
thank you, Lord, for providing for us. Um, you know, I have the ability to become a total off-grid uh, guy or whatever else, you know, producing all my own food and, you know, all the different things. You can hear the ocean out ahead. Just right there, I can see it through the trees. Let me spin this way. I wanted to make anybody sick. I don't know if you can see it down through the trees or not, but it's right there is the ocean. Almost there. But uh, I could do that stuff. But I learned over the years that it takes sacrifice to serve the Lord. Um, real sacrifice. And there's been a lot of things that I have sacrificed in life. And um, some really hard trials that I've gone through. Stuff I have never even shared online. Few people know about some of the things I've been through. Um, some very painful things. Um, very bad stuff that I've suffered. And uh, I just take all that, just give it back to the Lord and say, well, I've been a rotten sinner. Uh, unrepentant sinner for many years. And you died and you paid for all my sins. And so I owe you, Lord. And uh, these things that I've had to lose and I've had to suffer, it's the least that I could do for you, Lord. And um, so I'm going to keep filming here a little bit, Just put up with my ranting. Um, now you can see the ocean a little bit better out there. It's too bright. Out there is the ocean. Trust me, it's there. Um, I know, I know there's people that think that I do all this stuff with a green screen and that I rip off my viewers and I'm making millions of dollars a year and I have a, this is all a studio. It looks 2D fake. Somebody said to me the one time. <laughs> yeah, you know, because it'd be a lot easier for me to just make all this stuff happen with artificial intelligence than it would actually be to, well, I guess it would be nowadays. I'm going to say then for me to come and actually film it in person, but I saw a thing the other day um, where some snake was advertising this artificial intelligence video software and you just kind of tell it what you want it to do and the artificial intelligence will make a video. You don't have to shoot the video, edit the video, render the video, anything like that. It does it all for you. Absolutely crazy. So I guess at some point in time my um, videos will be no longer relevant and people just say, oh, it's not exciting enough. You know, I want to see artificial intelligence videos. Well, I'll keep doing what I'm doing until the Lord says to do differently. And that's the way that that works. All right, we are almost there. You know, the, this, the thing I love about the North Atlantic, by the way, which is right here, I'll be showing you in here in a minute, is that it's not like the tropics. I've been to Costa Rica, down to the Caribbean and, and things years ago. And it's not like that. It's, you know, it's not a... Um, tropical trees and palm trees and coconuts and and you know monkeys and things and and uh, sloths hanging in the trees and you know, there was a toucan uh, when I was in Costa Rica the one time in parrots and and uh, <laughs> tell you a little funny story one time when I was in Costa Rica uh, back in the 1990s and uh, there was this big parrot you know big red parrot you know there outside of the store and he's just you know there in the tree and I went walking up to him and he goes hola hola <laughs> and, and I thought I said wow that's pretty amazing they taught this this uh, parrot how to speak Spanish and then it was oh wait I'm in Costa Rica that's he's just speaking the native tongue oh yeah <laughs> Spanish speaking parrot but uh, so I guess I had to you know, try to speak back to him in Spanish. He wouldn't understand English. But, um, all right, now we go. Now you can see the beautiful North Atlantic Ocean. Very cold. That's why we like it. Um, I've often wished we could live down here, but uh, it doesn't snow as much as it does up in Northern Maine, so that's why we live in Northern Maine. 
but um, still very beautiful down here. So I'm gonna get down here closer to this and then we'll end the video. I can't end it now. I mean, you know, we're not down to the ocean, the seashore yet. I need to get down there. But brethren, don't ever be ashamed of your independence, of your isolation, being all alone as a Christian. Um, I'm gonna try to get finished what I have to say here because when we get down there, there's no blockage for the wind here and it might end up being, you know, that you won't be able to hear me. Um, so, remember that you have to be independent. We can't join with uh, lost people. It doesn't work. All right? Wow. Very beautiful. Here we are. Down here. Oh, boy. Don't want to fall on the rocks here. That'd kind of be a bad end of the video. Ugh. there we have it you can see way out there that's the ocean out that way this is somewhat of a little bit of an inlet but uh, there's the ocean over there so hello to all the brethren in Europe hopefully you heard that <laughs> uh, okay I don't think you're going to hear that but um, yeah so Europe's back that way so hello to my original homeland um, Maybe someday I'll get to go back there again, I don't know. But uh, it's a beautiful cove here. And so, but hopefully this uh, video has been a blessing to you. Um, let me know what you think in the comment section below. And certainly would love to do more videos down here at the ocean, but not easy because of the wind. And it's a couple hour drive for us each way. So I'll walk down here a little bit closer. But just really beautiful down here. Not like other beaches I've been to over the years. I've been to the Pacific, the Atlantic, Caribbean. Never been over to Europe, so I don't know what that's like. But, um, yeah, down here looking for seashells. That's some good help. Very neat. I don't want to get any closer. I don't want to get the camera wet. There we go. Alright. See everybody in the next video. Thank you for watching.